but I'm one of these normal guys um, with, that are missing from we just heard. And uh, when Darren called me and said, hey, um, what do you think about identity? I said, great, 18 minutes of therapy, and I get to talk to everybody about stuff that interests me so I don't have to pay for it. So I said, great. Um, I said, the sense of identity uh, that I'd like to speak about today are stories. Uh, because I think 600 million people on Facebook is awesome, but the 600 million people that are on Facebook are kind of interesting, and Facebook is a tool. That doesn't interest me at all. Xing doesn't interest me. LinkedIn doesn't interest me. But the people behind it interest me, and what they do with it then. It becomes something that we can evolve, and we can change, and we can have an opinion about. But we should have an opinion before we get into it. It's not something that this is important for me, um, that we can just ignore. I think that character is what counts. I think that too many times we don't actually live the opinions we state and tweet. I read tweets and I'm like, really? Are you going to do that? Oh, I tweeted. It's easy. Out. But I don't know if it's actually character. I think it's really easy to use these media and just to get out there. I don't think anybody has 400 friends in Facebook that they actually go to have dinner with. I think it's a couple people. I think it's nice to do. I think it's nice to live that way and think that way, but I also think it takes a lot of courage, a lot of uh, class, a lot of thinking about things uh, to actually have a sense of identity that incorporates all these things. Some of these things are, for instance, that character, like I said, counts. Uh, one of the mantras I have is to have an opinion and to accept the consequences of that opinion, which sometimes isn't very popular and sometimes is very popular, but at least I have it. So if I tweet, there's something. Somebody can say, I hate you, you suck. Okay, but at least I have one. I'm not just filling the void, electronic data is flowing all over the place, and people are saying, wow, that's super. Um, so I'm one of these normal people. Uh, this is something we have tattooed on the wall uh, in the office, and people are like, really? Well, Jesus, you know, I'm like, well, that's what it's like. You, we fail all the time. Nobody talks about it, but you do. Be nice if more people would talk about it. Then we'd have less problem with these kind of things with storytelling because it's a big illusion a lot of times. We want to say things, we want to commit to things. Customers come and say, hey, do this for us, or friends say, hey, I'd like you to get your feedback, and then Steve comes and says, hey, I think this sucks, and they're like, oh, I didn't want to really hear that. And I said, well, sorry, wrong timing, you shouldn't have asked me. I said, because you did, you gave me the permission. Yeah, A lot of things that are happening in the internet are without permission, we think they are, but they're not. Uh, my father, who I'm going to talk about today, because this is the travel that I take with character, the people around me, they're my mirror. Uh, if I tweet, if I Facebook, if I link in, they're normally people who I like to have around me and I like to commit to. It's not just, this would be good for businesses. Yes, there's always some of that, because we have all tasks and things we want to do. On the other hand, I'd like to have fun doing it, and I can only have fun with people that I actually like. My father used to say, how are you smart, Steve? And I didn't understand it. I was like, what do you mean? You know, I was a little kid walking around. He's like, you good at this? And I'm like, hmm, try it. Poof, broke. No, no, not good at that. He's like, next, try this. Poof, broke that. No, not good at that either. And then some things stayed. So he actually asked me, how are you intelligent? And our schooling system right now sucks because what we do is we don't ask that. We say reading, math, languages, humanities, arts, music, theater, dance, somewhere down here. It's not the whole package. You don't go in and say, hey, you look like you could be a dancer. Never heard that. I mean, geez, could be, but they didn't. Um, they don't pose those kind of things. I have friends who are sitting here in the audience who decided that the schooling system that they were supposed to have wasn't good enough for their kids. It wasn't good enough for them. They said, hey, we want our kids to come home and be like, yeah, kick ass, cool teacher. Yeah, I came home, I was like, <laughs> what's going on? You know, they don't understand me. So, you have to commit. You have to be willing to take that risk and say, okay, I'm going to do something about it. They did. They have a school now, 25 kids, cool teachers. Kids come home. Their homework is done. They can play. They can have fun. They don't have to sit there and be like, okay, till 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, got to do this, got to do this. No. Hey, do your stuff at school. Come home. This is a big thing that's missing in a lot of these, hey, you know, what's going on? Humor. I'm going to tell a story about my father that's really close to me, but uh, he did things where you got little glimpses of everything that we check out on YouTube. It's like, ah, you see that guy fell on his face. Everybody laughs. It's like you don't want to, but you do. And if somebody does it around you, it's even funnier. And if you know them, you call them up and you say, Jesus, I saw that, man. That was awesome. You 
didn't know it happened. You're like, oh, cool, yeah. So this is really important. All these things are character traits. And if you live them in the web, that's cool. If you live them in real life and take them to the web, even cooler, yeah? Um, but you ask, why, Steve, why are you telling us? We know this. Well, this woman, who I drew a long time ago, Marilyn Monroe, she came up with this. You are the next best thing. So you guys all are the next best thing. It's not Facebook. It's not Google. It's you guys. And it's me. Now, I don't care about any of that. So I'm like, I'm damn cool, yeah? And if you go into a school today and you say, hey, I'm cool, they say, calm down. Relax. We know you're cool. You know, if you go into a meeting, hey, we're cool. Yeah, okay. Here's the brief. Go home, do this. Yeah. But there are other clients. There are other schools. There are other friends. When you come in and you say, hey, what's up? How's it going? And your friends are like, hey, cool. There are friends who are like, what's wrong with you? You know, and I'm like, well, I'm doing good. Really? Well, my life sucks. And I said, well, let's do something about it. Nah, we'll see. It's okay. So basically, we have a stamp in the office that clients request. It's the what the fuck stamp. Sometimes it comes back in artwork, which sucks, but most of the time they use it internally because they don't understand what's going on. And they say it's a really easy way to send a signal to somebody to say, huh? You know? <laughs> but it's a little bit better than the standard question mark. Yeah? So it's a little bit embellished. And it has character, yeah? because you don't have to be somebody who likes to swear, you don't have to be anything, but when you get that on, it's like, what the hell is this? Yeah? And you go back and you say with attitude, hey, why did you put this on my artwork, or what, what is this about? You have a chance, you have a dialogue. That's cool if you're tweeting it, if you're emailing it, but if you do it in person, it's even cooler. The way I am is because of my friends and my family and the people I work and, and live with. One of my heroes, he died 15 years ago, but was my dad. And he was somebody who lived all these things, but he came from a terrible environment. He was raised in a tiny little town in the States, and he came up with things like this, I'll show you in a minute, like embrace your identity. I'm like, Dad, you know, philosophy? You know, my dad grew up on a farm. It's like, he came up with stuff like this. I'm like, okay, uh, I don't know, but I'll try. He said, you have to ask the right questions. That's what happens when you talk to people. It's like, what are we talking about? Well, ask me. And I say, well, what about this? And they say, this is the answer. Some people say, eh, you know, a little mochaccina, something here. Maybe I'll try that. Do you like it? Sort of gray. We have a nice term for it, warm gray five, if you're talking about print. It's like, it's not a color. It's like, it's just something. It's a tone, but it doesn't have any commitment to anything. You don't want to do that. So how do you do this? Well, you have to say, how are you intelligent? Something you have to really live. Uh, this is what I, the story I'm going to tell is how did uh, a Lay's potato chip bag change my life? Now, my father, he's somebody who basically wore button-down shirts, dress pants, wingtips his whole life. He was, when, not that he was like rich or anything, but he just said, I want to dress nice, I want to be the part, I want to be... Neat. I didn't know my dad had skin until I was probably 15 because he always had a t-shirt on. He always had a shirt on. You never saw him naked. Like, he went to the bathroom, came out, he was dressed, boom, finished. So I was like, one day, and my dad wasn't the beach kind of guy. So this is something somewhat conservative. What he did, though, and this is just to give you some aerials of what happened uh, to go on, but my father did this. Uh, we loved to play golf. He introduced me to golf when I was 10. We moved to California. I'll get into that in a minute. And he, he loved the game. And when he got sick, he said, we're going to go take trips now to California with two of his friends. One came from Sweden, one came from Hawaii. And he said, we're going to go play golf. Who knows? And we went to play golf. After the round, you have a couple beers. And he said, ah, you know, the macadamia nuts for $14 in the mini bar. I'd like to go to the supermarket and buy something. So we went. There I am pushing the cart through the supermarket. And there's this... 20-meter aisle of chips and pretzels. I see my father. He's the only person in this aisle. He's looking around. He takes this bag of Lay's potato chips and crushes it like a little kid. He's like... <laughs> and he puts it back. <laughs> and he, he straightens it out. And he's like... And he just walks on. And I'm like, Dad what are you doing? And he's like, with the straightest face, he's like, can you imagine the face of the person 
who comes home wanting these chips and just goes <laughs> yeah I mean he was being pumped full of chemo at this point he was like this is a good deal yeah but it wasn't 10 bags it was just one bag yeah and I got this glimpse of all these things he was saying was the humor part is almost like uh, an accelerator for how to get to where you want to be and I said well okay I didn't, I've never tried it. I've been in front of these chips a couple times. But, but that was his thing, yeah? And another thing he did is he, when my brother and I, we'd go to bed at night, he'd take these little stickers that he'd get on something, and he'd put them on our pillow the wrong way around, and we'd wake up in the morning, and he'd be downstairs, and we'd have these stickers stuck to our face, <laughs> yeah? So, and he'd hear us. He'd be downstairs drinking coffee, and he'd be like, Dad! And he'd be like, hmm, and he'd walk out the door. So... He had this, this innate sense of character. But my father uh, came from this very little place, Chicopee, uh, and a little farm outside of it. And this is close to Springfield, which is where the Simpsons are from. And this is somewhat close to Boston, uh, so the middle of nowhere. And raised very primitive on a farm. It wasn't uh, very luxurious. This was the 1930s. It was in the Depression. So he didn't have a lot. My mom was from Stutt or is from Stuttgart, um, and they met like 20 years later. My mom went to university, but she also grew up in the war, so they had some, like, fighting spirit in them. My dad came up with this, let's make better mistakes tomorrow. You know, my brother and I were like, yes! Yeah, it's like, go to school, and it's like, boom, F, yeah, mistakes. And it's like, I made it better, and it's like, less, or something like that. And our teachers would call up, and like, oh, Mr. Sassel, we have to talk, and it's like, you told your kids to make more mistakes? No, no better mistakes. Oh, they misunderstood that. So... <laughs> So basically, you know, we took this transporting sort of message that he had through this potato chip bag that I experienced at some point, and we tried to adapt it as much as we could. And I still do that today because I don't want to try to do things. I actually want to do them. And when you do that, what happens is that you actually reduce. You simplify things. You don't make it more complex. You just say, okay, this is good. This is bad. I like this. I don't like this. And what happens is when you do it, people actually appreciate that. They don't want things to be more complex. You don't want an app where you have to click 15 times to get what you want. You don't want to go into a bathroom and figure out how anything works. It just has to work, yeah? just like getting into cars. They made huge mistakes in the past. Get into a car, you don't know how to turn on the radio. It's not your fault. Some designers screwed it up because they said, hey, you're going to get it, and you didn't. So I love my identity, something my father said. Then I said, what identity? We're here today because we're talking about identity, what happened, and this is when I plopped on, 1969. Wasn't a hippie. Uh, my parents weren't either, like I said, but it's a good year to have. Born here, and what happened is, boom, Steve popped out. It's always good to put cute pictures in, even if you don't think they're cute. Like I said, my father. Now, what my father did is, I told you this basic background. Now, what I want to talk about in these sense of identity is this character trait. My father used to drive rally with Porsche. Yeah. Now, he when, uh, had a slide up before milk delivery. My father, when he was eight, had to deliver milk with a Model A Ford. And I was like, well, how did you learn how to drive? He's like, you don't. You get in, and you just have to do it because the cow needs to get, you know, you need to do your work and get the milk out. And he, when we were young, he didn't tell us these stories. He told us later. And we started appreciating why he didn't, because he's like, I don't want you to drive when you're eight. <laughs> We're like, well, okay, that's cool. I couldn't reach the pedals when I was eight, but uh, he said, don't do that. Yeah. But the thing is, he exposed us to a life that I live today, and I don't know why. I don't have Porsches, and I don't do this, but I have a sense of things because I was exposed to this sense. It has nothing to do with the web. It has nothing to do with what I'm doing today with my phone. It has a lot to do with how I feel about things, how I'm doing them on the web or on the phone. And I think that that's what happened to me in California. We moved there in 1980, and my life exploded because basically this is the motto of California, let your freak flag fly. Um, they're always the first to try stuff, and I got to try stuff. And my brother got to try stuff, and he became a photographer and a musician. I became an artist and a designer. And basically, all these things happen to me, and people start saying, well, you got to do this, and you got to do that, and you got to get this 
worked out. And you should be a designer. You should be an artist. You should be blah. And I'm like, Tonto, slow down. Yeah? I don't have any idea. I'm trying to sense it and feel it. I didn't know why. Yeah? I don't know why it happened. I do now today. It's the chips bag. It's the little moments where daydreaming, which I'm a big fan of, which freaks some people out, but when you sit in the office and you're like, <laughs> people will ask you all the time, you okay? Is everything fine? Do you need water? Dehydrated? Are you okay? Stroke? I'm like, no, no, just trying to figure it all out. And I think that that's what happens. When you do that, children do it all the time. You catch them and you go like, boo, and they're like, oh. And they come out with some sentence. Oh, uh, so-and-so hit me in kindergarten. It's like they weren't thinking about that. I think they were. And their subconscious it was digesting what was going on just like we do when we sleep. It happens in a, an awake state. And so everybody, more daydreaming, not while you're driving, but every time else, try it out. It's a good idea. Uh, the citizenship thing that, I'm, that was mentioned before in the presentation uh, is we all regard it as consumers today. When I grew up, it was character, you're a good citizen. These words don't come until you vote and until you get a passport these days. Citizenship is something that means you commit to something. You don't throw trash in the street because it's your street. People say, well, yeah, no. When you get ranked and rated these days, it's consumer index. When you say people, what do you feel, it's personal. But none of these surveys say, well, how do you feel about this? Because then you'd have to say, well, I don't like it, or how do you vote? How does that work? I don't have statistics for that. Um, I think we need to love the things we do more so they become valuable. When you commit to something, then you have character. And when somebody says, I don't want to do it in a room full of people, then that's the person you probably want to talk to, at least for a little while, and figure out, is it just a cliche, or are they actually committed to it? And that's important in all facets of what you want to do. Simplicity is something that, when you're authentic, you're not being authentic, you are. And that's why character counts. These are phrases that I spew out all the time. Some of my friends are like, yada, yada, yada. But the thing is, it is. Because my friends aren't always yada, yada. They're like, thank you. Thank you for when I asked you for feedback, you gave it to me in an open and an honest way, and it's authentic. And I think that when you, when you take risks, and when you say that you want to think about something, you want to dream, you want to imagine, and you want to turn those dreams into something creative, then you have to commit to it. Because that's the only difference between having an active imagination and actually doing something about it, is being creative with it. Because everybody comes up with cool stuff, but you actually have to do it. And when you do it, you feel good, even if it fails. I've had so many failures, and you're like, yay, and like, oh, okay, eh, but you have the experience. Everybody says this, but when you do it, you're like, it's never as bad as if you thought about it and somebody else did it. Ah, oh, see, I had that idea too, as I did. but you didn't, yeah. They did. It's okay. Uh, what happened in my life is that I started becoming my dad in certain ways, which everybody teaches you, nah, you don't want to become your dad. Or that. Yeah, you do. I think, unless it was a terrible experience for you, you automatically take things and you catch yourself. I make sounds when I sit down now. Uh, I never did that before. My dad did it. He's like, oh, you know, when did that happen? You know, I sit down, oh, yeah, okay, well, that's how it's part of my identity. And these senses lead to things like, don't stop dancing. My kids, I caught myself the other day, I'm like, stop dancing around. I'm like, jeez, what's going on? It's like, maybe he's a dancer, yeah? Could be, and I'm, I'm stopping him from doing that. So it's really simple. Uh, when you decide that humor, trust, creativity, confidence, honesty, and a lot of daydreaming is a good idea, then you know what to do. It's not very difficult, it's pretty simple. You trust your hunches, a lot of times people sit at dinner and say, ah, oh, do it. Get up the next day, try it out. If it's an online application, awesome. But I think what you should trust is that the sense of identity has to do with all these factors that I've come up with. But basically, you guys are the next best thing. Okay, thank you. <laughs>